Hey, hello everyone and welcome to Extreme Graphics Tech. My name is Angelo. Um, we have talked about many different GPUs in this channel, old and new. We recently talked about the 4060, we talked about the 3060, 2060 Super, we have talked about the 4070, we have talked about the 6800, many GPUs for people to, you know, have an idea of how well or how bad those GPUs are for those looking to upgrade their PCs or to put a cheap GPU on a second PC or for an emulation PC and so on and so on. So we have talked about a lot of different um, NVIDIA and AMD cards. And as I said recently, I had a trio of 2060 Super, 4060 and 3060. Uh, well, I think, you know, each can get their own conclusions on that. However, today I want to talk about the RX 6600 XT, which is a GPU from the RDNA 2 era that came around two to three years ago. Uh, and honestly, it's an okay card that you can find right now for around $220. So it makes very interesting in terms of price because uh, the 7600 costs around 250 to 260 and the difference is not that big, it's around 10%. So maybe this will be a better option depending on what you're looking for, especially if you look for it on the used market. Of course, it will depend a lot on, on what the prices are in your country and what you have to offer. But this is a GPU that is very comparable to the PlayStation 5 in terms of GPU. Of course, the PlayStation 5 has a higher bandwidth, which allows for more resolution to cram. In this car, I would recommend to use around 1440p or 1080p is where you're going to get the sweet spot for this GPU. This is not in any way a 4K card, okay? especially because we have to use things like FSR and so on. But before keep talking, let's see the benchmark and then I come with the conclusions. And as usual, I'm going to start the analysis with the Dying Light 2 game. In this, ca in this case, I'm using the 1080p resolution FSR quality with the RT preset, okay? Um, the reason I have to play at 1080p and even using FSR is because, as we know, FSR is not the strongest suit of the AMD cards. And as soon as you try anything with RT, the uh, performance really tanks. So if you will want to keep those 60 FPS, we have to lower the resolution. Of course, you can play at 30 FPS and then you're going to get, um, you can get better quality and you can even activate most of the RT features on this game, but you have to play at uh, 30 FPS because otherwise the game will suffer a lot in terms of performance and you will dip under 30 FPS. Uh, and I don't think that's uh, nice on this particular game. However, if you don't care about RT or you know the limitation of the card, then you can have an amazing experience by playing at 1440p with FSR quality at ultra preset. And as you can see here, we are around 85 to 90 FPS. And in some cases you can go even over, which is really amazing in these open spaces. Um, and you can play, uh, you know, high frame rate and everything. And I am sure you can push this game to like 1800p probably with FSR balance and a 60 FPS. I didn't try that because um, I was more focused on trying to get what I feel is like the middle point that you guys may want to check. So I think this is a very good start for the RX 6600 in 2024. Now, Howard's Legacy is another game that runs really good with over 80 FPS. There is points where it go, will go down, especially when you are flying, and it seems to affect different AMD and NVIDIA cars, like some areas where NVIDIA is uh, um, slow, uh, AMD is better. But in this case, we're playing 1440p, FSR quality, ultra preset. Don't activate any RT in these games, or the performance, once again, is going to tank, but that's uh, the RT here doesn't really provide much to these games. I think it's just... Uh, gimmick put in the game just to check mars something so this game looks very good this way but as you can see here while flying it goes down but you can iron out those little errors now when it comes to the last of us part one once again you can play 1440p fsr balance high preset and this preset is used mostly to keep performance but also because our limitation of eight gigabytes of vram doesn't allow us to go to ultra otherwise the game will lack and uh, the gpu will lack enough vram but it still it looks very good you can have more than 60 fps uh, performance on this game there are going to be dips in there so i wouldn't uh, recommend to go more aggressive with the FSR here, so don't uh, lower some settings if you feel you're not getting the performance you want to. 
Now, when it comes to Spider-Man, I was really surprised. It looks at like Insomniac is doing a very good job when it comes to ray tracing because as you can see here, we have 1440p FSR quality, very high preset and their RT reflections on, on high and we still get around 60 FPS. And all the time I was playing for like 30 minutes, this is the worst part part I was able to record so I'm showing you the worst case scenario and as you can see it, it fluctuates but it's still very very playable of course you can lower instead of high uh, playing a very high prison you can load to very high and so you can iron out those little dips here and there and have a better experience so this is a very good show for the RX 6600 when it comes to Resident Evil 4 then the situation is mostly the same we can play with the RT preset this game is very memory sensitive so we have to be very careful about that but with the RT present and uh, 1440p with FSR quality we have a game that is basically 60 FPS lock if that's what you're looking for if you want more FPS of course you can remove the RT but I think the RT in this game will give you at least better reflections with they look awful without it so this is a very good compromise of image quality performance um, uh, uh, frame rate in this case so it, it looks very very nice and it's a good show a Starfield now this is a game that runs better on AMD and as you can see here I will say yeah it does and actually I'm using 1440p medium present and FSR 50% I believe I could have put the FSR on like 60% and still probably be over 60 FPS but the important part is to understand that we are in the worst case scenario most places in this game will run much better than this so yeah you can get maybe a, a up the preset and go to high but in, in these cases then you are going to have some dips in the in some area so it will depend on what you're looking for but if most of the game which should probably be around 60 fps no issues whatsoever now, Cyberpunk 2077, this is a game that if you want some RT, it's going to be difficult to be at 60 FPS. So in this game, I put a 1440p FSR quality, the ultra preset and the RT shadows, and you can play it at around 30 to 45 FPS. And, you know, it, it's not bad considering an, a PlayStation, you're having a better experience than on a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X. So that's, from my point of view, is a win. And uh, you can lower the resolution and maybe lower the preset, but I don't think you're ever going to get a uh, um, perfect 60 fps with ray tracing in this game because this is more nvidia optimized however if you don't care about ray tracing once again you can still keep the same setting just remove ray tracing and lower to high preset to be above 60 fps on ultra preset uh, you can get 60 fps but it can also dip under while with the high preset you're going to be always playing above 60 fps of course you can lower the fsr i as i said balance is the minimum i would recommend i wouldn't go to performance on most games only you absolutely have to because well otherwise it's going to look bad but as you can see here the game is running very well and it's looking amazing so um yeah this uh, the rx 6600 is to show very good performance from my point of view Alan Wake 2 yeah th this is one of the hardest games to really test in the sense that we are playing FSR balance low preset 1440p and well this is what the game shows it's above uh, 30 fps which is make it playable don't activate any rt because that will destroy performance however this is the worst case scenario i know for a fact that when you move out and you go into the city and other places you're going to have above 60 fps with this configuration unfortunately it's again that uh, tends to vary a lot depending on the area so i would say with this configuration you can uh, mostly play uh, around 40 to 65 fps depending on the area you are Avatar is uh, the only game in this test that I t use FSR performance because I think FSR it looks particularly good in this game and I want it to be you know above 60 FPS to iron out any issues like not being on the minimum so you can see here I'm using medium preset FSR performance 1440p and the game still looks good and especially has a very good performance. I am personally playing this game. I'm very advanced and I am enjoying a lot. And believe me when I say this game has amazing graphics and I am showing you just part of it. Uh, after that, I'm, um, beyond you're going to have some amazing vistas and changes in scenery that are breathtaking and on Forza Horizon 5 I pushed things a little bit too much because this is one of the best optimized games and I went to 1800p with 2x MSIA and I went for ultra preset, uh, preset. and as you can see here I'm, I'm around 50 fps 
However, this is in these areas. I was able to get even up to 80. So I think I push a little bit too much. You should low the preset to high or lower the resolution to 1440p and you're going to have a game that is going to be 60 FPS lock for sure. Great showing for this game and the RX 6600 XT. Well, have you seen? I think this, this is a card that is still uh, you can play very well. You can play ba basically anything that you want to. And some games you can even activate and have a good experience with ray tracing. You know, that's one of the weak points of AMD compared to Nvidia. And this card shows us because you cannot even activate it in games like, for example, Alan Wake, because in this card in particular won't be able to play that game at all all if you put um, ray tracing because it will go very very bad unless you are you want to use like 1080p uh, fsr ultra performance or something but on games like spider-man is going to run very well and on games like cyberpunk you can activate one effect or two so well it's not the greatest when it comes to ray tracing but still on rasterization is a very very capable car and talking about rasterization and fsr as i was before i think that's another one of the weak point of the gpu that even though you can use fsr and fsr has been improving they have stopped for a while doing anything to the reconstruction part of it fortunately now we have fsr3 but this is still not very widely available but in case of fsr2 i find that you have to be more conservative than you can be with the lss where you can be more aggressive with um, lower level GPUs. We can use, for example, 1440p performance on the LSS on some cases and the image will still be actually quite pleasant. However, if you start using like performance mode on FSR with 1440p, the resolution is too low to do a very good reconstruction. So in some cases you're going to be limited. Okay, on that sense. And um, yeah, it's unfortunate that we have to talk about the LSS and FSR as a way to, you know, get some resolution or performance, but that's the reality we are in now. These technologies are here, games are more demanding, and to be honest, I have no problems with them, but I wish uh, you know that we not that we didn't use them, but it seems that you know, we, we are trying to push them too much. So in this case, I would say that this for me is a card that uh, is more suited for anyone trying to play at 1080p or if you want to play with a 1440p, then you have to be more conservative with settings and, you know, use FSR. I will, um, I think I would prefer to lower settings that be too aggressive with FSR. I think a 1440p quality should be the minimum for FSR, but of course you can go to balance and still have a good experience, but going to performance is going to be a very bad look from my point of view so uh, the, the, you have to play a little bit more there and of course with these options then it makes it impossible to like play most games that have ray tracing with ray tracing or with all the features uh, on it but still you can enjoy some ray tracing features on this card anyway as i said this is an 8 gigabyte uh, card the rx 6600 can play basically anything you can get to 60 fps easily as long as you are uh, settings the settings correctly um you use FSR in some games and you know if you're trying to get 260 if you are going to play at 30 some games I know every time I said 30 FPS at kitchen dies apparently and people get angry at me but I think it's viable in some games for example Alan Wake is the only way to play and have still a good uh, graphics from my point of view is to play at 30 FPS it's a game that doesn't really you know it benefits every game benefits from 60 but you know, it's still very playable at 30, no problem whatsoever. It's not like a first person shooting or a driving, a, uh, a driving games like Forza Horizon 5 that we tested. So I think it's not such a huge problem. But it's still a character that is going to play basically 90% of everything that is out there at 60 FPS or more, as long as you're willing to do some sacrifice in the settings. And AMD tends to go low, and you know, on the on the used market, tends to lose more value than Nvidia for some reason. And then you can find this card for a lot cheaper, probably, and you will have a good investment there. I am not sure the prices on each country, so I'm not going to make guesses on how much you can find it. So, but I guess this card could be easily found, probably by um, a, a good price, uh, respectively, to new. As I said, new you can find it for around two hundred and twenty dollars. Um, used. 
I'm, I'm not sure on each country, as I said, it will depend. But I think it, this is a very good car if you're looking for, and it's a, you know, an, a very good entry point if you're trying to upgrade or you come from like a 580. This car is going to give you a lot more performance than that car by a lot, and it's going to be a big jump. So yeah, consider the RX 6600. This is still 8 gigabytes, but in this tier of performance, it's more than enough for any game to play, especially if you're planning to play, to play Power War, now that is so popular. Thank you very much and see you on the next video.